I was on the website Focus on the Family today looking for more things about Christian freedom, and I will have something on this website later this week. But this is what caught my eye today, a post from August 28th of this year, Sperm Donor's 96 Children Exposes the Selfishness of What Happens When You Separate Sex from Marriage. Shouldn't that be exposed? Isn't children the subject of that sentence? Oh, well, never mind. And we have this really nice image with the pastels indicating all that is good and wonderful and pure with childhood. And this is really an interesting story having to do with morals and ethics and just taken a weird turn. Hi, my name is Scarlett, and I'm an atheist and skeptic, and I like seeing what Christians have to say about all kinds of things. And today I want to talk about the morals of IVF. Of course, from a Christian point of view, and something like Focus on the Family, and they'll put it right out there, they believe in the traditional family, one man, one woman, however many kids they can have, and sex in service of only that. That's the only thing that's good. And so their approach to IVF is this is all that is bad with the world and wrong. Let's just get to reading what they have to say. So we start out with an introductory paragraph that just says that Focus on the Family started in 1977, deals with lots of problems. And so infertility is one of the things it deals with. And it points out that as medical technology has advanced to address the issue of infertility, what's possible has skyrocketed and often with significant ethical and moral objections to the procedures and so-called solutions. I don't know if skyrocketed is a good word there. I mean, you could have just said medical technology has advanced to address the issue. I think the skyrocketed is sort of indicative that they think it's too much. I think objections is the wrong word here. I think that they actually mean considerations. I mean, they certainly object. But I think that the rest of society just needs to ponder these things, the ethical and moral issues surrounding things like IVF. And then, of course, there's that lovely word, so-called, the so-called solutions. So, okay, here's the problem. There are people that are infertile and they want to have children. Fine. These are people that actually want families. Focus on the family should be happy about these people. Let's see where we go from here. This paragraph talks specifically about IVF, where sperm and egg are combined outside the body and then implanted later. Now, this is the part that's interesting. The last line carries with it unquestionable moral hazards is IVF that involves either egg or sperm donors, okay? So unquestionable moral hazards. I don't agree with this, but this is what they're putting forth. These are unquestionable, can't question them. You know, if you have sperm and egg donors, they can actually sign away anything to do with that. They can be completely anonymous. I don't know why it's unquestionable. Like, if you've decided to sell your sperm or eggs, you sell them away, you give up any rights to those things, we're done. That's it. Let's go forward and see why this is unquestionable. So we get to the case of this guy named Dylan Stone Miller. Second paragraph, Mr. Stone Miller, 32, is featured in an extensive Wall Street Journal piece today detailing his 9,000-mile road trip this summer to try and meet as many of the 96 children whose conception was made possible by his sperm donation. And thankfully, they don't say that they are his children here. They were made possible by his sperm donation, which is fine. According to fertility experts, the estimated 96 children might be on the low side. In fact, it's nearly impossible to direct every child biologically connected to a sperm donor. And that's like, I guess that would be interesting, but why would you even want to do that? Last line, I will never know for sure how many children I have, Miller told the journal. Well, this Miller is just completely misguided. He does not have any children. He donated his sperm. They're not his children. Other people use the sperm to conceive of children. So this man sad if he wants to think that way. They're not his children. Let's keep going. To date, Dylan Stone Miller has met 25 of the children. It seems most of them were born to women who identify as lesbian or to heterosexual women who are single. As it is, almost 80% of sperm bank recipients are same-sex couples or those without a partner. Okay, fine. 
I'm not going to look up these numbers. I'm not as interested in the numbers. They might be right. They might be wrong. I'm more interested in the morality that the piece lays out. And I'm also not going to look up this Wall Street Journal profile. I don't have a subscription to the Wall Street Journal. I'm not going to pay for it. Again, I'm interested in what Focus on the Family has to say. So if anybody wants to go read it, knock yourself out. So we move on. The Wall Street Journal profile lays out a tragic and somewhat tortured journey, sizing up Mr. Stonemiller's predicament as follows. Those who have welcomed him to their home are trying to figure out his role. A biological father, a donor dad, a visitor, or special friend. Neither parents nor Stonemiller are certain where to draw the line. And I'm wondering why the parents have to do this. It seems like they're being polite, and he has sort of imposed himself into this situation. And it looks like both the Wall Street Journal, I don't know if this is apt or not, because again, I haven't read the piece, at least this line, seems to think that this is okay for him to insert himself. I take the position, I don't think it's right for him to impose himself into this circumstance. He is the donor. He's not a parent. Let's see where we go from here. How did Mr. Miller respond? It was hard to look my biological daughter in the eye and tell her I wasn't her dad, he said. Why would you want to say you're her dad? Like, why do you want to take on this role? You donated your sperm. You should have given up your right to do this. You shouldn't be in this position at all. The article goes on, of course it's difficult because all of this is wildly and recklessly outside of God's creative design for marriage and human sexuality. Now, what I want to say is this should not be difficult at all. Mr. Miller should not be in this circumstance. He has imposed himself upon this, has nothing to do with God's design. And that's why I think that this focus on the family piece is just totally misguided. Like if the kids want to meet the sperm donor someday, maybe they would. I don't know. There's a whole movie about that from a while back. But it seems like he should not be the one to initiate this. And like the whole notion that God has a design is what's warping people's views of this. Let's keep going. Some may ask how sperm or egg donation is any different than adoption since the children aren't biologically related to the parent in either case. That's true. And I think that there's a similarity, but I would actually argue that sperm and egg donation is even one removed from adoption because in adoption, there is a person that had the child and for some reason could not keep the child and put the child up for adoption. In this case, they haven't even had the child. So you have, if it's a woman, you don't have any attachment to a born baby. And if it's a father seeing a baby born or anything like that, like you are totally detached from the process. So if anything, I think sperm and egg donation is further removed. But we go on. According to John Stone Street, president of the Colson Center, okay, Colson Center, I looked up, it's some kind of Christian thing preparing people to go out and teach the word of God. Okay, so take that for what this is. This is the quote. Sperm donation doesn't repair a fracture like adoption does. Rather, it creates a fracture, permitting and even incentivizing a view of children as products. I have no idea what is meant by a fracture here. Is the fracture just simply that there's a parent that can't have a kid? I don't know. It's it's not very clear. I what I see is P we have adoption because there are kids whose parents can't take care of them for some reason, whatever that is. And in this case, when we have sperm and egg donation, we have people who want to be parents and they need some component to make that happen. I don't know how that is creating children who seem like products. This is a medical procedure. And like a lot of the medical services, you know, we have to pay the people that make that happen. It would be the same if I get pregnant and I have to go in to see my doctor every month to get a checkup. Would then my child be like a product because I'm paying to go in and have an ultrasound done or whatever? This is nothing like viewing children as products. It's it's not that people are thinking of creating children like they would create a doll in one of those toy stores where you can make a doll with a certain color hair or eyes and certain clothes or, or what have you. It is nothing like it. These are people that want to be parents and they're going through a medical procedure to do that. And so whatever Christians think of this, like you can agree, you you don't have to agree, you don't have to do this, but this person's quote does not contribute meaningfully to this discussion. This is a person that has no idea. This person, whoever John Stone Street of this religious foundation has religious agenda to push. They're not like a sociologist or a psychologist or anything. Let's keep going and see where this crazy article goes. 
Read deeper into Mr. Stone Miller's life and you discover that his incentive to donate his sperm while in college seemed to extend beyond the $100 per visit he received as payment. It turns out his girlfriend then conceived a child and sadly decided to have an abortion. Quote, I had a vision in my mind about what it might look like to have brought life into the world. Okay, um, you know, that's sad, I guess, if he wanted to have that kid and she didn't and they weren't in agreement about that. Let's keep going because I don't have any more to say about that. Perhaps he thought his donation might somehow make up for the loss of their child. Okay, now we are just imagining, right? We don't know. <laughs> this is something that this blog post posits. It's not something that the that is quoted or anything. Let's keep going. Dylan Stone Miller's story is more than a curious oddity, the spectacle of one man fathering hundreds of children. Okay, he didn't father hundreds of children. He donated sperm. And you're like making it sound like he has more responsibility in this. Okay, if even unknowingly. Well, he donated the sperm. Okay, he, he should have known. Okay, back to the article. It's really a profound microcosm of a devastating consequence of what happens when you separate sex from marriage and usher in an anything goes moral free for all when it comes to bioethics. Well, whoa, that's just like a lot of words right there to say nothing. It says Stone Miller is sad that his sperm has been used to make babies. And that that's the only negative consequence I've seen. So I'm trying to say, what is the devastating consequence? That this man is now sorry that his sperm has been used and he wants to be a father to those children? It sounds to me like he needs some work, some psychological work, let's say, on deciding what his role is in all of this. I guess I'm just at a loss about how the use of IVF is a moral free-for-all when we can have standards and rules. And so if you donate your sperm in this case, it's like, it's not yours anymore. You're not the father. There are parents there. Okay, let's wrap this up. Advocates of the sexual revolution talk up personal freedoms and fulfillment, but leave off the fact that children are usually the helpless and innocent victims caught up in its wake. Okay, so let's break this down. We have a mention of the sexual revolution, which is to make us associate IVF with sinful sexual behavior as opposed to the kind of things that should happen, which is God-approved marriage that has children. Doesn't matter even if it's a married lesbian couple, that's not the right kind of couple. It also alludes to children as helpless and innocent victims, but it doesn't show any children that are helpless victims. What we see is a man who is sad because to him, these are his children because those were his sperm. But really his responsibility ended when he donated the sperm. He should not even be involved in this. And I was gonna restate it again. I think that the person that needs help here is that man to get over whatever these trauma issues are in his life that's making him do this. And it's interesting to me, the group that mainly uses these, we have on the one hand, lesbian couples, and on the other, single women, groups that Christians generally deride and uh, focus on the family definitely does not approve of because they're for the traditional family. And it's kind of like saying, look at how horrible our society is. And here are people that just want children and they, <laughs> they're using legal and medically sound methods to get them. And focus on the family can only think about this one sad man and this is one of the problems I see with the way religion inserts itself into our society. It takes things that should be clear, that we can have legal boundaries around, and it tries to sully them and say, well, God doesn't like this. But if God is in control of everything, how can you say that's not a part of his plan? Maybe this is all a part of God's plan for some reason. Anyway, just in conclusion, to me this story shows how on the wrong side of all of these issues, Christian organizations can be on the wrong side of people's personal freedoms and on the wrong side of what the moral issues actually are. And they want to take us back to some other era where we can't have our fulfilled lives because they need to be a certain way according to what they think God wants. And there's no way they can demonstrate that this is or isn't what God wants. I guess all those single women and lesbians should just know their place and realize that God doesn't want them to have those things. Hmm. Well, what did you think? 
put it in the comments below and while you're down there you can like subscribe and do all the youtube stuff you're on youtube you know what to do and if you like what i do you can buy me a coffee that link is in the description below and i will see you soon for some more christian freedom bye for now